this section? Um, oh, there's the police chief. I think he's in camouflage. He's trying to sneak up. Wasn't he getting patient? Uh, actually, I, I would have one question for Mr. Bray, probably at the next public hearing, and that is that we've had about 17 accidents from this intersection uh, down to Fowler Road, and I'm wondering if by the installation of a light here we could mitigate any of those uh, turning accidents which have come from Jordan Way, the entrances and exits of the, uh, of the uh, shopping center at Fowler Road. That's really the only question I have. Will you be? He's got a question for you for the next meeting. <laughs> They'll deal with that. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to share uh, with us? No, this I, I do have some other accident statistics as far as, and I also have uh, statistics on uh, injuries. I don't know if you want to take that time tonight. I can make that available to the council, and you can distribute it or publish it as you wish. I think that would be fine if we have it ready for our next month's packet. Thank you. Uh, don't leave. I, I'm just curious if the chief has an opinion on this uh, matter. Quite honestly, the statistics are, you know, they're fairly confusing to me. Uh, even though we've had an increase in traffic volume, we haven't had a predictable increase in accidents. Uh, we've gone from eight accidents in 1988 to like two or three in 1989, and then they go back up again. It's really been a roller coaster ride. So there's, there's no dramatic bell curve that we've been following on these things as far as incidents of accidents and traffic volumes or as far as a degree of injury. Uh, we generally take a look at injury as uh, determining factor on vehicle speeds, uh, the injuries that we have had have not been significant. Uh, we've had no incapacitating injuries at this intersection since the records that I prepared uh, five years ago. We've had some the bumps and bruises variety, but certainly nothing that would indicate that high vehicle speeds was a primary contributing factor. Uh, as my numbers indicated to the council, uh, most of them have been driver and attention <coughs> and simply, you know, congestion at the intersection uh, as opposed to something that can be corrected with enforcement. So I think that's something we've got to take a look at. We take a look at the necessity of that light is whether or not there are any other things that we can do. And I don't see uh, increased enforcement as much of an option at this point unless, you know, the numbers that we develop here on out indicate otherwise. Thank you. Any other questions for Chief Pickering? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other council comments? Okay, we do have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Excuse me. The time in your motion would be 7.30, I assume. Thank you. Thank you for that correction. All those in favor? Ms. Post, 7-0. Thank you. Second item. Second public hearing this evening is on the General Assistance Ordinance Amendment. Mr. McGovern, would you like to speak from the floor? Yes, it's, I still have my coffee down here. Uh, under the General Assistance Ordinance of the town and under the state laws, it provides currently that if, if anyone receives assistance while they're waiting for an SSI or Supplemental Security Income Check, that uh, it, it's sort of voluntary whether or not they pay that back once they get the check in the holding. Uh, this amendment, which would bring us into compliance with state law and the state general assistance rules, provide that essentially be mandatory that if anyone receives, receives their SSI that they've been waiting for, and meanwhile we've uh, helped them with substitute funds, uh, that they pay those back. So uh, that's generally the outline of what the proposal is. Thank you, sir. I'd like to open the public hearing on this item. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak to it? Those of you at home, we've lost our public, basically. <laughs> the majority of the public is vacated. Seeing none, we will close the public hearing. I'd like a motion, please. Madam Chair, I would uh, move adoption of the amendment on the General Assistance Ordinance. Second that. Thank you. Council discussion. Council Cogshaw. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Council discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? 7-0. <laughs> we have a third public hearing this evening on the flood insurance map revisions. Mr. McGovern? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Under, within the construction code, uh, Chapter 6 of the Town of, uh, Town of Cape Elizabeth Code of Ordinances uh, is our flood, uh, flood, federal flood insurance program. Under the federal flood insurance program, we occasionally get updated maps uh, once they've done more surveying out of the coastline. Uh, what this ordinance provides that our official flood map would be whatever the latest 
its uh, revision is that the uh, FEMA has sent us the Federal Emergency uh, Management Agency. And this would, would merely uh, provide for ease of administration uh, for not only the town, but for those who uh, live in flood prone areas to know that the town has uh, updated their ordinances sufficiently so they are always fully covered with their uh, flood insurance. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. I'd like to open the public hearing on this. <laughs> you want to speak to this one? <laughs> Seeing no public wishing to speak, we will close the public hearing. Can I have a motion, please? I had moved the amendment. Thank you. Council discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? 7 0. Getting carried away, Council Chapel. Okay. Item number 40 is to consider a proposal regarding recycling bins for refundable bottles and cans and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? Yeah, uh, Rosemary Reed is here this evening who presented this uh, to you last month. Uh, I would defer before making comments to uh, uh, Mrs. Reed if that's what she desire. Thank you. Desire. Come to the podium and enlighten us, please. Thank you. With the many serious issues, I, I do uh, want to thank the council for allowing this on the agenda and that it certainly was not frivolous on my part in bringing it to the council. Um, last uh, May, I had the opportunity to speak to uh, three members of the Recycling Committee in person to suggest an idea that I had uh, been thinking about for quite some time, having observed uh, in my two campaigns in Cape Elizabeth people throwing away returnable uh, uh, beverage cans at the transfer station. And uh, it occurred to me that uh, a way to capture uh, perhaps additional funds that were not tax dollars that were being um, spent in other ways would be to uh, allow an accumulation spot at the transfer station um, for people who would be interested in uh, returning uh, their beverage containers to uh, town organizations or school organizations. Um, we have seen recently in the Cape Courier uh, in two letters to the editor and not an opportunity where uh, in two single day events there was approximately two thousand dollars raised in bottle drives for most sporting organizations uh, is generally a um, f top of the list fundraising event so I thought we could sort of wed the two uh, increased recycling and long-term fundraising and an opportunity to uh, provide um, a place where people could on a regular basis return uh, the equivalent to uh, nickels uh, in the form of beverage containers uh, for the benefit of uh, school and municipal uh, organizations that were taxpayer supported and which only um, affected people who were residents of Cape Elizabeth or uh, students in our schools. And I'd be happy to answer any questions I have thought uh, at length about how to administer this, uh, but not to be presumptuous, I'm not going to suggest them <laughs> until uh, asked, but uh, I would also say that um, I have spoken with the presidents and people involved in fundraising um, in the organizations that are school related, and also Family Fund Day, uh, who think it's, and Project Graduation, who think it's an outstanding opportunity and they would like an opportunity to try it. Thank you. Okay. Do you have anything to add? No. Nope. Okay. Can Last I have a day? Or You're comfortable up okay. there now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it gets easier. Could I have a motion and then we'll have discussion? Madam Chairman, I would move that uh, we, uh, we send this uh, proposal to the uh, recycling committee where they can uh, hammer out a variety of the, uh, the questions we have uh, as to how this particular process uh, uh, would work. Second. We have a motion and a second. <coughs> Council discussion. Carl? Council Pearson? <laughs> That's okay, <laughs> Jenna. <laughs> I, I would just uh, hope that we can we can get this uh, passed and sent on to the recycling committee as soon as possible. I know Rosemary's taken quite a bit of time, and I think this is part of the innovative, uh, creative type 
financing and other ideas that are going to make uh, tough fiscal uh, times a little easy to cope with. And I think that we should uh, hasten the process and get it going right over to the recycling committee. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Cogshaw? Mm -hmm. May I address that point? Please. Um, I wasn't aware of that when I, of course, thought of this idea. <laughs> but um, two things uh, occurred to me. One is that uh, I think the town council members are very aware that I am involved in many aspects of fundraising for the um, town and the schools in um, capacities that don't include running it, um, the campaign that is. But I would be very interested in asking that the council consider perhaps a a different version of my original proposal based on that information. Also the fact that the recycling committee has had this and uh, decided to table it for various reasons. One of the reasons being that they couldn't decide um, which organizations or the concern of which organizations would benefit and in which months. Um, so if another proposal that could eliminate the problem of the Jordan Trust and also uh, accomplish pretty much the same uh, uh, outcome would be that I would um, request that if the uh, town council does agree with the idea of a perpetual, if you will, opportunity to, de to deposit returnable beverage containers somewhere, that um, uh, if they allowed that, then we could ask the school board for permission to put them on school property and that we could limit the organizations to school. We could report back um, if we started this in September. Uh, and finished it in June, we could report, report back to the council as to the shortfalls, problems, or concerns that I uh, had developed uh, as a result of doing this, like uh, if or what to do if organizations don't pick up their returnable beverages, competition between uh, differing sports, and uh, also the issue that we will be addressing on the school board uh, in the future will be a uh, one sport Oh, I mean an all-sport booster club uh, as an alternative to the many diverse uh, booster clubs that are currently uh, available. So I just thought I would not to uh, uh, muddy the waters here, but just to say that this uh, original proposal, although my intent was to do something good that was simple, I do realize that there are extenuating circumstances over which I have no control. So I just add that for okay, another alternative. Thank you. Councilor Jordan. I would just like to ask the question of the manager is other recycled materials that are sold, are they put into the account for the poor farm? The in each of those cases, the cost of collection exceeds the revenue that we receive. I, am, I understand that and I see that in your memo, but I just want the people to understand it out there. So if you get some people, young people that wanted to work for nothing, as I call it, uh, just to raise the funds, then we're going to take the money away from them for another purpose. I no, think I this is an ex no, I understand, but no. this is what this is saying, this, in my opinion. And I am one for this 100%, and I think if you can get young people interested in it, the only problem that I have with it is that who's going to supervise it and who's going to do it and make sure that after every week or every month, that those bottles are cleaned up and the other person moves in. This troubles me to no end. I've been in projects before and it works good for a little while and then it's all gone back onto one person. If they could solve the issue of how it's going to be done, I don't think we should take this and use it for that purpose. This would be the way I would look at it because I don't feel you'd get the people interested in doing it unless you want to hire somebody to do it and then you would just be a cost out factor. This is a voluntary deal for some people to raise some money 
and for school projects and I just feel it's, it's something that should be looked at. I'm disappointed that the recycling committee isn't here and involved with a hundred percent and I would hope that they would take a hard look at it. Maybe it can't be done, but if there's something like that could be done and they want to recycle and they got a way to to do it, I don't see why they don't move forward with it. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Councilor Cogshaw. I agree this is a very, it's a very innovative idea, very creative, and perhaps um, if the school board would also be initiating the idea of rotation on school property, and perhaps one booster club, supervisory problem, I'm sure the uh, recycling committee would find it difficult to refuse to. Well, now I'll put on the finance committee chair for the school board and say that I have taken the opportunity to run this by the superintendent and other members of the school board. If we would sense the, basically the decision of the recycling committee to table that if the town council did approve this in concept, if we could uh, pursue the administration of it, and I feel that there would be support uh, to do that if that were the wish of the council. And we meet tomorrow night. The, the, the motion on the table is to refer this to the recycling committee and what I'd like to suggest is you know perhaps you know, and I sense certain urgency amongst the council you know with the one exception of did we have to deal carefully with Thomas Jordan that if you'd like to see this move forward maybe if uh, I could get together with Rosemary rather soon and that if we go in together working with Bob Manley as well recommending a package to the recycling committee uh, so they have something to look at, something to react to, uh, would get a lot further ahead a lot quicker. So I'd like to suggest that as a process. I think that kind of united effort makes a lot of sense sure. in this case. And having just done a bottle drive for Booster Club over the weekend, I know how much you can make from bottles and cans we have in this town. We made $500 in four hours. I know and some of you participated. And people do accumulate the bottles for the organizations, and the people that I've spoken to said they would love the opportunity to give to a, a wider variety. So it, it would serve many purposes. Okay. Yeah. Councilor Jordan? I would just like to add one more thing as far as my opinion goes. Uh, if you put these anywhere other than where you've got recycling going on, you're not going to accomplish the issue. They're not going up to the transfer station with some stuff and go in the school property to leave the bottles. Few people do it, but the majority will hear and hear and let them go. Yeah, I think that's something that the recycling committee needs to address, that kind of location. I know the con what I've consistently heard from the recycling <laughs> committee members is the convenience is the mainstay of the program and you have to have that kind of convenience. And that's another reason bottle drives, the way they're operated right now, are successful because people, most you have to do is answer your door. <laughs> and sometimes you can just put it out and leave. How's the cog show? I know the recycling committee at one time was hoping to be able to locate enough in town at the IG parking lot. And at that point, the property was in mm -hmm. special holding mm -hmm. corporation in bankruptcy. And I understand that property was just sold at auction Right, and I think we have to be extremely careful about competing with the IGA and their returnable business. If we do something like that, returnables there, I want to be very sensitive to that. Yeah. The motion is to um, refer this issue to the recycling committee and to have and that was seconded. There's been a side suggestion by the manager that there be a united front, um, including himself and Rosemary Reed and our public works director to discuss this with the recycling committee. That's not part of the motion. It was your words. But it's in there. <laughs> is that, is that? that that's, if, if you pass the motion, that's the process. That would be the process. Okay. I just sure like to add one more thing, and then you can ask for the question so we can vote. But I, after what I read in the main times in the paper, IWS, I think if there's any way that we can grab some of that that's going out there that they don't know what to do with, and people are willing to to uh, 
sell it, I think we ought to look at it, and I would hope and the committee would take a real hard look at this. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? 7-0. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Item number 41 is to consider the acceptance of state funds and take any necessary action. This is in reference to state funds that have been um, forwarded to the school department in the amounts of, let's make sure we do this right, $5,700 for the removal of an oil tank at the high school, $5,700 for the removal of an oil tank at the middle school, and just over $54,000 for structural reinforcement of the connector roof at the middle school. I have had a conversation with the chairman of the school board, Charlie Greer, I'm, you know, over the weekend, and we are in agreement that there it would be a reasonable process to have a meeting at which the town manager, the school superintendent, the chairman of the council, the chairman of the school board, the finance chair of the council, and the finance chair of the school board would meet and discuss um, proposals for um, how to deal with these state funds and bring those proposals back both back to the town council which has to authorize what happens to that to those funds. That the information about the meeting was not in your packet materials because we just got together with our conversation yesterday. Yeah. This item is, is basically on the agenda for informational purposes, so you know the money's there. You accept it, and the recommendation would be to hold the funds uh, awaiting a specific recommendation. So moved. No. Second. Any questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? 7 0. Thank you. Let me know when you have your meeting. Yes, sir, we will. That will be a public meeting. Item number 42 is to consider a proposal for the disposition of foreclosed commercial properties and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? Yeah, this was on your agenda uh, last month, and you were concerned that maybe the attorney ought to have a look at it. And what's happened, uh, I think four paragraphs have become 14 paragraphs. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you do have a legally worded uh, proposed policy before you uh, that, uh, that uh, relates to commercial property that's foreclosed upon and uh, basically what it, what it provides is that uh, properties you've foreclosed upon uh, after the state that uh, the, the previous owner would have no special rights. Uh, anyone that was uh, foreclosed prior to the state that have until December 31 of this year to redeem the property. Uh, as of this point in time, as of this evening, uh, there were two, there were, earlier in the day, there were two commercial properties that the taxes had been unpaid for. Uh, today, the, the town clerk did receive a payment that she's holding in escrow, uncashed, uh, for one of the properties, and that will be on your agenda uh, next month uh, for possible action on a quick claim deed. Uh, that's property uh, at South Portland, uh, Cape Elizabeth Line. Uh, the, the other property that was involved at 300 Ocean House Road, right up at the famous intersection here, uh, we haven't heard anything from the property owner. We did send letters out uh, to each of the properties uh, following your last meeting to let them know that this issue was specifically on your agenda this evening and exactly what the proposal was. Thank you. Nice to know we generated potentially some tax revenues. Okay. I would like a motion on this item, please. So moved. Any comments? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Seven, all those opposed? Seven zero, please.
Item number 43 is to consider a recommendation from the Appointments Committee regarding vacancies on a newly established committee, the Service Delivery Options Study Committee, to take any necessary action. And Councillor Wayne Creelman is the Chair of our Appointments Committee. Sir. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just as a brief reminder, um, based on our uh, budgetary process during the last, uh, last fiscal year's budget deliberations, uh, we decided as a council that it would be perhaps very helpful uh, for the council and the manager uh, to create a, a service delivery options study committee. We, we've kind of nicknamed this the, the privatization committee, yet that doesn't really encompass the whole uh, process and charge that uh, has been established for this committee. Um, having had that uh, discussion uh, in the budget deliberations, we uh, did decide at our June 8, 1992 town council meeting to uh, basically create this uh, study committee. Um, based on that, a uh, Cape Courier uh, announcement uh, went out uh, in the June 20th, 1992 Cape Courier uh, soliciting uh, interest from our citizens for service uh, on this committee. The uh, committee was established, uh, essentially, uh, which, will con which will consist of seven citizens appointed by the town council utilizing its appointments uh, committee process. The terms of the committee members shall expire on March 1st, 1993. The committee purpose is to study alternative service delivery options, including uh, privatization initiatives, fee-for-service potentials, equipment leasing in the town, uh, innovative uses of municipal properties, um, and any other options which might serve to stabilize or uh, reduce the property tax burden in Cape Elizabeth. That's the purpose. The committee charge uh, involves four uh, areas, and that is firstly to work with town staff to develop current cost estimates for municipal services now provided. Secondly, to review uh, privatization initiatives and fee-for-service experience in other jurisdictions. Thirdly, to review utilization of municipal space and properties. And lastly, to prepare recommendations based on these findings for the council. The reports would be established in that the uh, committee would make a preliminary report to the town council by November 1st, 1992, and then a final report to the town council by uh, March 1st, 1993. Um, I am delighted to uh, report that uh, based on our uh, solicitation of uh, town uh, interest, uh, as well as many uh, telephone uh, conversations uh, by both myself and the uh, two other members of our appointments committee, uh, Councillor Chapel and Councillor Dahlbeck, I'm very pleased to present to the uh, entire council this evening the seven members of the uh, proposed service delivery options committee. Uh, they include Stephen Bates, John Brady, uh, Gil Jordan, Jeannie Marvin, Elmer Murray, Richard Nest, and Michael Reardon. Uh, before all of you this evening is a, a synopsis of the, uh, the curriculum vitae of all of the uh, seven uh, proposed members of this committee. And I think uh, without going into uh, great detail, based on the uh, uh, years and years of Cape Elizabeth residency and enormous uh, uh, experience uh, both in the public and private uh, sector, um, I will submit these uh, seven individuals for uh, the Council's approval. Thank you very much. We appreciate the work that your committee has done. Is that in the form of a recommendation or a motion? It, it is. I will I'll move. Sign on. Any comments? We'll take the question. All those in favor? All those opposed? 7-0. I'd like to announce that I will convene that committee and join them at their first meeting, which will be Tuesday, September 1st at 7.30. If any other counselors want to attend, please do. We will go over their charge and get them on their way.
Thank you very much. What's that date again? September 1st. 7.30. It's a Tuesday. Um, don't know yet. But we have a workshop the night before, so we can... We sent the meeting notice out to the committee members in the next few days that we'll distribute to the council as well. Item number 44, Councillor Cogshaw. <laughs> Any councillors opposed to having Councillor Cogshall abstain? No problem. Okay, we well, appreciate you doing so. Thank you. Understand. <laughs> Item number 44 is to consider the appointment of several town attorneys and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? Yes, this is a town council appointment the uh, manager has nothing to do with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but non nonetheless, uh, if you want me to summarize it, I will. Uh, it's proposed that Tom Leahy of the firm Monaghan, Leahy, Arkadale, and Libby continue as the primary town attorney, that other f uh, folks on his staff also have designation as town attorneys. That's because of the provision in the ordinances that says that the town attorney shall do X, shall do Y. And when we get a note from Mike Kale or others in the firm, just in case someone challenges it later on as to who might have done it, it's clear that they were acting in the capacity as town attorney. Uh, Linda D. McGill as labor issues attorney. That would be grievances, uh, different issues that we, we have occasionally when, you know, for example, a Fair Labor Standards Act question or any issue in the law in, involving labor issues. Uh, Mon Henley doesn't have any expertise in that area at all, or very little, I shouldn't say. Uh, they might not like the comment that they don't have any expertise. Uh, as labor negotiations counsel, uh, the firm of Drummond, Woodson, Plimpton, and McMahon. Uh, as backup town attorneys, uh, should uh, the Leahy firm have a conflict, also Drummond, Woodson, Plimpton, and McMahon, and to continue as bond counsel, Bruce Cogsell, uh, who has uh, been performing that function for uh, well over 15 years. Uh, bond counsel essentially uh, looks at when the town does borrowing to make sure that we're in compliance with all the, the different federal tax acts. Uh, as well as to assure uh, the bond holders that the council went about the process right in uh, voting for a certain bond. Thank you. Can we entertain a motion? So moved. So second. second. Thank you. Discussion? Sounds good to me. Thank you, Councillor Jordan. That's enough discussion. <laughs> I'd like to move the question. All those in favor? All those opposed? Six to zero with Councilor Cogshill abstaining. Thank you. Item number 45 is to consider authorizing the town manager to submit several projects to PACs for possible funding and take any, any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? As I indicated earlier this evening, about two years ago, you proposed uh, certain street lights, uh, traffic lights. We're at that stage again. The process is quite a bit different, though, this year. Uh, for one, we're dealing with the, and we'll be dealing with a totally new state law with the sensible transportation policy that was adopted by the citizens last November. And secondly, the federal government passed the Intermodal Surface Transportation Efficiency Act of 1991, which totally revamps uh, the way that federal funds are handed out uh, for, for road and transportation improvements uh, with the emphasis on intermodalism, which means things other than just uh, cars, uh, bikes, uh, pedestrian ways, uh, ferry terminals, railroad uh, stations, historic preservations, a whole long list of things. Uh, there, there is a committee of PACs, the subcommittee that's been reviewing how projects ought to be reviewed and submitted. Uh, the PACs policy committee is deciding on the 20th of August uh, exactly what criteria ought to be used to review proposals. Uh, so it's a little difficult in the interim to decide what to submit. The other change in practice this year is that should PACs initially decide to fund anything this time around, rather than waiting for the state offer to come two years ago, they're going to ask for local council approval sometime this fall. Uh, so that uh, if towns don't want to go ahead on different projects, then PACs knows early and the state knows early. But there's another reason for that, in that in a lot of the communities, the legislative body was never involved at all. It was never asked to take this step that you're now taking. And uh, 
there were advocates on the subcommittee who pushed that uh, we that there ought to be early public comment uh, on projects uh, and opportunity for public knowledge of them. There's six specifics that are suggested at this time. One is reconstruction of Shore Road from Surf Road to the old Fort Williams entrance across from Dr. Sager's home. And this would include provisions for bike lanes and a sidewalk between the two entrances. Second, uh, the Shore Road Shoulder Improvement slash Bikeway Project from the Fort to Route 77. Uh, three, reconstruction of Shore Road from the South Portland Line to Surf Road, including cold planing, which is reducing the level of the road, redefinition of the crown. Right now, it's, it's kind of like this, and this would put a, a new cr crown on the road. Uh, drainage structure replacements and paving. There would be a light reconstruction as opposed to a heavy reconstruction. Four, Greenbelt acquisition pursuant to the Greenbelt plan. That's probably, we'd ask for about $100,000, uh, see how far we get with it. Uh, five, to realign Route 77 at the Spurwing Church to take the curb away from the church. i always in fear that someday there's going to be 150 people in the church and there's going to be a, a vehicle in there with them. Uh, so, but it uh, hasn't happened yet, but the church has been hit a number of times. Uh, six would be to improve the town center through sidewalks to promote intermodalism. Uh, th there's a number of problematic issues with, with all of these proposals. One is you submit to the feds uh, and you have to go by their rules, not your own, and you ought to be aware that uh, it ties your hands considerably of what you might otherwise do. Uh, second, there's a delay. Uh, if there are, there are issues you want to address, it makes it difficult to address. Uh, I think the, the other point I wanted to mention, I was having a discussion with Bob Malley today about the whole Shore Road mess. Uh, I walked it a week ago Sunday and uh, also driven on it quite a bit lately. And it's, it's getting in worse and worse shape all the time. One of the council's goals uh, was to address major arterials. And, you know, one thing that's been help holding us up from doing any work on it is not knowing if this bikeway is going to come along or shoulder improvements. And it, it to do that is another whole major, major project. And you know, for those of you that remember the bikeway study, and I'm not looking for a decision on this this evening, but what I suggested to Bob Malley, uh, the director of public works today, was that you know, we ought to just go in there and use every last dollar of paving money, every last dollar of road money that we've set aside this year, start at this end of Shore Road and, and shim it and pave it and uh, get it back in good shape. Obviously, that's a major policy decision. I'm not going to ask you to make it tonight, but uh, you know, there are a number of considerations. I really don't know when the deadline is. Uh, on August 31st, you're going to be having a workshop uh, with uh, your Labor Council. Uh, in order to have that, it, it struck me you probably want to have a private discussion. So we will have to have a one-item council agenda in order to vote to into, into executive session. You can't do that at a workshop, so we'll have a, it'll be treated as a council meeting. And what I'd like to suggest is that you give all of these projects some thought between now and August 31st. If there's any uh, things you want added to the list, you know, let me know and we can uh, get them distributed to the other members of the council prior to that. Or if there's any concern you have here you want to take off. And the other point is I'd like you to give more thought between now and then. I'll, I'll put together some sort of position paper working with Bob on uh, you know, exactly what is best for Shore Road and what are the pros and cons. Of just going and paving it now and waiting. And, uh, we, we are going to shim the small section. Shim is just to fill in the real big divots, uh, the little section between Surf Road and the Fort Williams entrance, because that is, has just gotten so poor that uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's trying to be careful not to say it's in so poor shape that we set up a liability issue here. But it's not in very good shape, and uh, I think we can all see the problems here. So, uh, I, th I think what I'm suggesting is uh, that you table this item to your special, will be a special meeting on August 31st, which is not what was the original recommendation, That's but fine. the more thought I give this, I think it deserves more time than you might want to uh, give it at 1015. Okay. Thank you very much. Councilor Dalbeck. Could you explain item five a little bit more? Yes. Let me, can I use the blackboard? Sure. If you do as well with Mr. Lee. Item five is the realignment of Route 77 at the Spurling Church. Here's another one here, is it? Use your sleeve. 
Hmm? Use your code. Anyway, right now, the intersection goes about like this. Everyone the camera that? needs to see this Everyone. also. Try to charge. This is Sterling. This is the church right here. Right. What, what the suggestion is, and again, it hasn't been designed, but it's something we proposed two years ago, didn't get anywhere, something we proposed four years ago, didn't get anywhere, is essentially to bring this Right, so the road would come up to approximately the point of the far opposite end of the pavement, and that this turn would be, instead of the real sharp curve, the curve would be softer considerably. What we find is an awful lot of debris from vehicles along the parking lot is here the fence. What we also find, we've had scrapes in the church, the, the pin of the church has been hit, and it never shows up as a high accident location because what what happens is an awful lot of the accidents are unreported. You, you rarely see, if you look at it closely, sometimes you see all the problems over in here. Uh, it would change the appearance of it, but you know, right now what you have is you, you get a high car moving at high rate of speed, heading right for that historic landmark. And uh, yeah, I don't know if this is the answer, but it is. You know, okay, take a little bit of that I understand. It. Yeah, the road takes a reverse slope there, too. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sort of jet propels you to the church. Mm -hmm. Get you to the church on time. Before we start rumors, this hasn't been funded. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's just a thought. If you stay there, do you have a question of him up there? Yeah, up there or back here. I, don't, I just want to add to it that there's uh, been quite a few times that the hydrant has been hit coming the other way from Scarborough, and you can see where they go up onto the grass there by Donnie Layton's house. Yeah. Spot. And it's a tough spot, and I see they cut the brush back to make the visibility better for anybody coming the other way, which is a good point. Let's put a traffic light there. Put a traffic light. Right. Freeway okay. stop sign. Erase that comment. Are we going to move the church anyway? That's coming from the town center, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Right across the street. No. <laughs> we have to get serious. Are there any other questions on that particular? No. part of it. Councillor Jordan? I have a question on I just, maybe not a question so much it is a comment, okay. that uh, as far as sh the Shore Road Shoulder Improvement Bikeway of Fort Williams to 77, I see where they paid a section of it, and I went over to the fort, which I do once in a while to see what's going on. Uh, I was looking at that and see where they put the lines on it and people with bicycles and walking and what have you. To me, that is a, it is a hazard and somebody's going to get it one of these days. We get into this once, but it ended up that, geez, we had a more of a cost as far as someone uh, engineering the project than we would have if we went ahead and done it. And I still say we could put two to three feet on the edge of that road without no big engineering deal, but I bet we couldn't do it because it wouldn't be done right. It'd be somebody else's fault. So we got to have an engineer to design it. Then it could be wrong, and then it's okay. Now you could do it as a shoulder improvement, and you know I think what you, the, your primary area of concern would have to be working very closely with all of the, the abutting property owners because uh, there might be some impacts. That's been one of the issues along the way. Just uh, well, you said it was paved. Was was is that the section up near this end? Yes. Oh, because I, I I got nervous there for a second that maybe they had shimmed it today, and I was giving you information on something that already happened. Because they have due to do about to do that any day. Other council comments on this? We do not have a motion. We have. This evening's recommendation from the manager that we postpone action on this item until we have a special meeting on the 31st of August. I'm going to be tabled. Second. Any discussion? Do you want until further notice or do you want until such and such a date? I would appreciate a date specific. August 31st. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? Seven seven. Just Madam Chairman, if, if any councilors do have any suggestions or ideas, I'd strongly encourage you to uh, contact us uh, or anyone from the public. 
looking at the public, uh, anyone from the public as well, uh, if they see any needs out there in the community that we might not have, have found. Very good. Thank you. I would appreciate a motion to take item 47 out of order. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? 7-0. Thank you. Item 47 is to consider scheduling the date of the October Town Council meeting and take any necessary action. We, that is the October meeting which traditionally seems to conflict with the holiday in October for Columbus Day and we have generally had our meeting on the Wednesday rather than the Monday holiday evening. We do have two staff persons who will not be able to be with us that evening, the town manager and the town clerk, I believe, if we had it on Wednesday the 14th. We, we have to decide how <laughs> vital. <laughs> Do we have to have you folks but here? I, Can we have it some other time? If I may for a second, Madam Chairman, I put that on the agenda after the executive session to discuss publicly, but not on, hopefully not on TV, so that counselors wouldn't be discussing when they're not going to be home if they should have travel plans and that's usually been that's how we try practice. to do things yeah. we have to be careful with a lot of our calendars here you know what I what I might like to suggest is that you know we would announce if anyone wanted to check when the meeting schedule that they check with us uh, tomorrow we would know but or whenever but a little awkward to discuss publicly when people aren't going to be home for security other reasons what is the desire of the council discuss it now we can discuss it at the end of the executive session. The public should not have to suffer through seven of yes, us please. going through our calendars. I would t entertain a tabling motion on this. Yeah, table it till after executive session. Second. Favor. All those in favor? Opposed? Eight zero. <laughs> Thank you. Item number forty-six is to consider entering into executive session to discuss matters relating to property acquisition and/or disposition and take any necessary action. So moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? All those opposed? Zero. We will enter executive session. We will let our television crew depart now. We thank you. I have to assume there is nobody who wishes to um, have citizen discussion of the items not on the agenda, unless the television crew. Okay. We will adjourn after executive session. We thank you for joining us this evening. Look forward to having a good turnout at our public hearing on the traffic signals next month. Thank you.